Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Brother Malachi. We are the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. So we have Brother Malachi again joining us, and again he's sharing a story about uh, the way in which the Lord answers prayers and is alive and active in the world today. Brother Malachi, Amen. take it away. So a few years back, I had the joy of living as a missionary in Nicaragua. And one of the highlights every year for me was this pilgrimage we go on to a place called Esquipulas. And you just have thousands of people from around the country coming for this pilgrimage and going to the shrine of this Cristo Negro that was there, a crucifix of a black Christ that thousands of people over the years have experienced miraculous healings from. And so the people's devotion and their love for the Lord and especially for the Eucharist was at the heart of this devotion, this pilgrimage. And I just love being there in these giant crowds of people. Uh, one year I found myself there and I was with brothers who were visiting and they were not necessarily fluent in their Spanish. Um, and we got separated in the midst of the crowd as we were coming into the town. And it was, part, it was because I actually ended up helping to carry the, uh, the predu that had the Blessed Sacrament on it as we we're walking in the final stretch into town. So when I finished carrying the Blessed Sacrament with the other men up to the altar in the middle of the, the square, I looked around for the brothers and I couldn't find them anywhere. And I was like, oh snap, like they're not going to know where to go. They've never been here before. And there's like thousands, like probably 50,000 people around. And so I'm trying to figure out where they're at. And the sun starts to go down and I'm getting a little bit panicked. And I go to one place and the next. And then I saw the actual sanctuary where the shrine is and the crucifix is at. And I thought, well, maybe they went in there. That'd be a natural place to go to. So I make my way up to the doorway of this sanctuary. And, and I look in, and the entire place, the floor is covered with candles, like everywhere, like hundreds and hundreds of candles burning. And people just stacked, you know, from wall to wall, squeezed in next to one another, trying to get close to the front where the crucifix is at. And... I look up to the front and I think, well, I don't see the brother anywhere. I guess I'll just join the procession going up to the front. And so I squeeze in the door. And as I do, it was like finding myself on a human conveyor belt, you know? Like literally, there's so many people. and There's this slow procession to the front that I'm moving and my feet feel like they're not doing anything. Just getting pushed forward, you know? Um, and about a quarter of the way towards the front, I hear out of the side someone say, Padre, Padre. And so I look over and I see down on the floor, there's this young woman who's got this face that's just distressed and she's crying and waving to me, Padre, Padre. And so I look at her and I break out of the line, kind of squeeze myself out of this like massive line going up to the front and I walk over to where she's at and laying in the midst of the candles on the floor is this elderly man with just a face of anguish. And on one side is this young man who's his son and the other side is this young woman who is calling, Padre, Padre, and that's his daughter. And so I kneel down close to him, and they say, you know, please pray for our father. And they go on to tell me the story, how two years before he had an operation in his stomach, and for those two years had been in so much pain that he couldn't walk, and they had carried him to the shrine. They carried him there. And, and you could just see, like, the desperation in their faces, and I said, well, you know, where is it Where is it that you got the injury at? And this guy, totally unabashed, you know, like, uh, like a puro nika, you know, just pulls up his shirt and he's like, aqui, 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 you know, and there's this <laughs> giant scar. And I'm like, okay. And uh, he's like, well, let's pray. And I remembered that I had a relic of St. Therese in my pectoral pocket. So I pulled out this first class relic that a buddy of mine had given me. And I took it and I just placed it right on his stomach and I closed my eyes and just prayed silently for a moment and then prayed in the spirit and asked Therese and asked, you know, Nuestro Señor de Esquipulas and, and prayed a Hail Mary with him, begging for healing for this man. And I was just praying and then I opened my eyes and I see the face of this guy just staring at me. And he's just like, and he's looking at me and like there's no more pain in his eyes. And his face is just like beginning to glow. And I'm like, what just happened? And he just yells out, no me duele, no me duele. He's like, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt. And for the first time in two years, this man was experiencing total healing from this pain that he had had, constant pain. And his daughter starts crying and his son starts crying. And I'm sitting there crying. I'm just like, God, thank you. 
And I take the relic, you know, and I say, God bless you, Dios le bendiga. And, and I get back in the line, the procession of people, and I like, you know, jump online and just process to the front and just give thanks to Jesus for what he had done. Uh, and it was this moment of realization that, that Jesus is the healer and that God is still in the healing business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, in, and he's asking and inviting and welcoming us to be the instruments of healing for one another. Brother Malky, thank you for sharing. It's good for, I think it's good for all of our faith. The journey of this, this pilgrimage we're trying to make together, faith, hope, and charity, growing mm -hmm. in our, our love and confidence in the Father, will continue again. We'll see you, uh, see you next week. God bless y'all. God bless you.